guys, so come can with me. I am actually going to be doing some canning right now and I would like to teach you guys literally step by step what it looks like in the kitchen to do some water bath canning. I'm going to be making Christmas jam because I'm going to be canning this for the teacher gifts. Eliana's yelling Christmas jam. I'm gonna be doing this for teacher gifts for next week. Uh, so I'm going to show you step-by-step step literally what it looks like to go ahead and do water bath canning or steam canning because I'm gonna be using my steam canner in the kitchen. And I'm gonna rotate you. I have like a little setup going on here with my phone. It's literally sitting in a napkin holder because I'm not fancy enough to have like cool, cool stuff. So hopefully like the whole thing won't tip. But anyway, this is my steam canner. I can link it in the comments. It is uh, so a big pot that looks like this inside. So you can see I'm already warming up my jars. I've got the water uh, just barely up underneath the jars. I really prefer a steam canner. Um, let me lean in a little bit. I prefer a steam canner because it doesn't burn you like water bath canning does. So water bath canning, you fill up your pot, you're covering your, your jars fully with water and you're letting it roll. But sometimes when it's boiling and rolling, it's gonna be splashing out on your stove top, onto you, getting your jars in and out is a lot harder to handle. I did steam canning, um, I've done it for the past two years. I did water bath canning for five and I'm telling you like a steam canner is so much easier and safer than water bath canning. And it's easier for the little ones who want to come and help as well, my little ones standing here. So let me go ahead and show you um, my Christmas jam recipe. So first I'm gonna be throwing in an entire bag of partially thawed out whole strawberries. So I'm gonna be just dumping things in my pot as I go. This says tear here, but it has no like little thing. So let me get the, you know, the little like, the little pole thing that you, <laughs> have to get you started on that, whatever that's called. So I'm gonna pull this open now. Make sure there's no like leaves or anything that got in there with them. You know, cause sometimes these are frozen and they have leaves and things in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Can you go throw this in the trash room? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is a bag of cranberries, fresh cranberries. Yeah. So you can make your own um, cranberry sauce, your own cranberry jam, cranberry orange marmalade, lots of stuff at this time of year. Just because you don't have a garden and fresh goodies coming in from the garden doesn't mean that you don't have anything to can. So remember I showed you you could do elderberry syrup and that's like a huge thing um, to can at this time of the year because of how sick everybody is. Okay, so I poured in my cranberries. All I'm doing is just dumping stuff in the pot right now. So uh, next I have an orange that I went ahead and cut up and I took the peeling off. So this is just an entire orange and I'm gonna be just dropping that in there. Actually, I think I'm gonna like make it a little bit smaller for my immersion blender to get to. I have an immersion blender I'm gonna be using. You can, um, you can use a food processor, a regular blender, you could chop it. Um, you could just, I mean, you can leave it whole if you like chunky jams, that's up to you. Um, but I know most people prefer like jellies and stuff over, over real chunky jams because jellies just tend to be a little bit more uh, universally easy to use. <laughs> Eliana saying hi. Hi. Hey. Hey. All right, now I took that orange and I flipped it all the way around and I got zest off the whole thing. So there's my orange zest. I'm gonna throw that in. Whoa. Orange zest. Cool. Yeah. Hello. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to get. Wait, did you take that tiny spoon? No, there it is. Okay. I'm gonna get my little tiny spoon, and I'm gonna measure out a fourth tiny spoon. spoon. Are you gonna use it? Yeah, I'm gonna use your little tiny spoon because it's the perfect fourth teaspoon size. So I'm gonna do a fourth teaspoon Mommy, that's my of spoon. ground cloves. Shh. Get down. Stop showing off. I'm going to do a fourth teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. Make sure I get the right amount there. This is what makes it so Christmassy are all these like lovely, lovely flavors of things. And then I am going to get my allspice, which I'm going to get a fourth teaspoon of allspice. We don't want to eat that. We don't want to eat ice cream. Allspice. Then, 
like that. Okay. I'm literally like telling you guys the Wait. recipe as I'm doing it. You need to get down. This is not a, a good place for you to be right now, okay? Sorry. She was happily watching TV in the other room, but of course, as soon as I start talking and cooking, got to be in the middle of things. Now, I've got a half a cup of water. Anytime I'm using water for any of my canning recipes, like across the board. It's filtered water. Um, I'm not using tap water. Now, I use tap water in my canners because it's not going into the food, but tap water has a lot of minerals in it. Sometimes it can have fluoride in it. You don't want that messing with your recipe. So anytime I'm actually going to be doing water in a recipe, I always use filtered water. So I'm adding my half cup of filtered water to that. Oh, look. Cranberry has a little leaf stuck to it still. I guess it tells you how how fresh they are. I see strawberry Ew, holes I'm still on there too. So I'm gonna, uh, yeah, don't throw things at me. There's my pot and I'm gonna go ahead and start bringing that up to heat. I'm gonna be turning my, my burner on about halfway um, medium heat there and I'm using both my burners so it should get pretty hot. I'm gonna set this one over here on my makeshift um, tripod because Poor. I'm not buying a tripod for this. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and put in four cups of sugar. That's four cups of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. Anytime you're using, uh, anytime you're doing jams or jellies, you gotta use a lot of sugar, mainly because the sugar helps your jam and your jelly set up. So you want it to be like a nice, thick, jelly type um, thing. So if, you, if you're not using enough sugar, you're gonna end up with more of a syrup. Um, so it's just going to be like a really thick, I guess, mucusy type. It's nasty. I would, I would always make sure that you use the amount of sugar that the recipe calls for. This recipe calls for four cups of sugar. So I have third cup measurements here. I'm going to dump the so sugar. I'm going to dump the sugar. Two, nope, I got it. Three. Because i got to keep special count. Two. Two. Three. Three, two, three, last set, four, two, three. Okay, Ew. four Ew. cups of sugar. Yeah, four cups of sugar. It's a lot. Pure cane sugar actually um, works really nicely if you're trying to like cut somewhere, but you cannot substitute honey, you cannot substitute agave, you cannot substitute non-sugary things. Um, you have to use sugar, <laughs> like granulated sugar or uh, pure cane sugar, but you have to use actual sugar for um, jams and jellies, otherwise you're going to end up with a mess. You don't have clean hands, you're not allowed to put your hands in there. Okay, I'm gonna go clean. No, you're still not allowed to put your hands in there. I'm telling you. Okay, so I'm just gonna stir the sugar up in there. So all I'm doing, everything is still pretty dry because it's not cooking down yet because it's not coming to heat. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna stir the sugar into the fruit and coat it because once that fruit is coated, as the heat starts hitting it, it's gonna help the fruit to break down. And that's what I want it to do. I want it to start breaking down, releasing all of its lovely juices and flavors into this. And I'm gonna let this cook for a little while. Now, once I add the sugar and turn on the heat, I gotta babysit it. Sugar cooks really quickly and there's not a whole lot right now to pat it down. Let me show you what I got here. So if you see my pot, like there's not a whole lot between the sugar and the bottom of the pan. So the last thing I want, thank you. The last thing I want is a bunch of sugar getting all stuck to the bottom of my pan. So I'm just gonna keep up this stirring. Look at that, see, uh, crystallized sugar. It hasn't stirred in yet. Oh, I don't want that stuck all in my pan. What a mess. Ew. You can see it's already like liquefying a little bit more. Ew, mama, it tastes good. It tastes good? Yeah, yeah. it tastes really good. Okay. Now remember, I'm doing this. I'm making this a little bit longer because I want you to basically be able to can with me. So, let me set this back over here. 
Oh, oh it's gonna oh. fall. <laughs> Say mommy. I know, right? So, um, so I'm going to be making this like real time. So I'm sorry if it's a little bit longer, but cool. you can be making yes. your jam at the same time I'm making mine and it'll be taking the same amount of time and it'll be like we're having a little chat, won't it? So I hope everybody's doing okay. Oh, there goes my phone. It's showing you my... See, I have like a little lip on the back of my stove, so nothing's... Even... <laughs> All right, we'll set it there. How about that? Move the sugar bowl. I'll set it on the lip. That works. Eliana, you don't need to be playing with a, a, an immersion blender. Put it down. Uh, the immersion blenders, by the way, at Kohl's were marked down... It was like $14.99, and then they had a $12.99 mail-in rebate, and I've been wanting an immersion blender forever, so I'm hoping it works because this is my first time with an immersion blender. Can you get down and go away? Yeah. You don't need to be in here while I'm working with hot stuff, especially not when I'm working with the canning. No, no. Oh, I've got to be in the middle of everything. Pouty, pouty. She's got a pouty face on most of you guys who are doing canning probably don't have kids as young as mine. Maybe you do, but they'll want to be in the middle of everything. This is important stuff to teach your kids. How to do um, homesteading and home preserving and all of that. It teaches them to be more appreciative of the food, where it comes from, how hard it is to make stuff. Maybe they won't be as picky. Um, a question you may have about what to do with Christmas jam once it's made uh, it is a fruit-based jam, so there's no like pepper type things in it. Anything you're using with peppers is really good with like crackers and cheese at this time of year. Christmas jam is actually really good if you want to put a little bit of it on a ham Excuse. and cook a ham with it. That would be a really good glaze. It also goes really well on crackers. It goes well on bread. I don't recommend it for like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> That's just kind of nasty. Um, but it does go really well on, um, like I said, on ham, pork chops, ham loin, um, spiral ham, all that stuff. So instead of opening like that brown sugar package, you just top it off with this kind of stuff, the Christmas jam. Some people like to eat this stuff right out of the dish when you give it to them, the, the mason jar. The dish. The dish, the mason jar, because it just it tastes so good. It's basically like a fruit Can I puree. Can the mason jars, they're heating up. Now, every time I'm doing uh, water bath type canning, pressure canning, whatever, I always put my jars in my pot, whatever it is, if it be the pressure canner, if it be the water bath canner, the steam canner. So that way it just, it gets them nice and, oh, you can see the steam. I, I just pulled the lid off. It gets them nice and hot. So that way I'm not having to like worry about them just sitting and cooling. I don't sterilize my jars in the dishwasher because ball now sterilizes them you always do need to make sure you wash your jars out because sometimes they can get glass dust in them from manufacturing so I always wash mine um, I usually just do a squirt of Dawn in there and then I uh, just kind of shake it in the jar with some hot water and then dump that into the next jar and then shake that and then dump that in the next jar and rinse them all off and then I'll stick them in my canner to get warm and ready so, oh, this is looking so pretty. It's breaking down. The strawberries are really breaking down quick. The the cranberries are like still really hard. So we're just gonna keep stirring it, keep babysitting it. If you're making it, just hang in there, keep stirring it. This is about a 30 minute process. Yeah. You're doing great. Just hang in there. Canning is, it does look good. It smells good, doesn't it? Can you smell it? Mm, it smells good. like Christmas, doesn't it? Good yeah. night. It smells so good. The oranges mixed with the, the strawberries mixed with the cranberries. Oh, it just, it does. It smells like, and then the cinnamon and the clove. It smells like Christmas in a pot. Mm. You want your house to smell good. You can always just throw like some cinnamon sticks and some cranberries. Yeah. Maybe some orange slices into a pot of hot water and like have it on boil on your stove top yeah. and your house will smell like potpourri. Without all the, without all the chemicals. Yeah, see, so one of the points of homesteading is to avoid as much of the, like, chemically stuff as possible, right? To get things right from the ground and be able to preserve it. So, why have a Glade plug-in when you can just have things boiling on your stovetop, right? Or simmering, you don't have to boil it. Simmer it. Oh, man, this smells really good. This is my first time making it. So, this is a highly 
sought after and used recipe in my canning groups that I'm part of. Everybody's going nuts over making it right now and going on and on about it. And I thought, hey, you know what? It's a slow canning season right now because we're done with all of our summer veggies. So why not try something different? I'm gonna be doing some more um, elderberry syrup later today too, because I'm giving away elderberry syrup to the teachers. I already asked them about it and they are very excited about getting elderberry syrup with the upcoming food season. Can I season. try some? Try some, it's not ready yet. Oh, and game. It's starting to get a little bit thicker. You can see can kind of it coming off the spoon. Can I get that cute? It's getting nice and thick. Can if you're gathering your ingredients, can I'll go over them again. No, be careful. I don't want you being able to on top. If you're gathering your ingredients, you need one bag of cranberries. I think mine was like a 10 ounce bag, 10 or 12 ounce bag. Um, you need a bag of cranberries. You need a, about two pounds of strawberries. Um, no. No. I say two pounds, two cups. She's distracting me. 16 ounces of strawberries. So I just used a bag of uh, frozen strawberries, one of the small ones. And then I did a uh, one orange, peeled off the peel. I, well, I zested it first, uh, and then I took off the peel, and then I threw that in. So you need one orange, bag of strawberries, bag of cranberries. You need to get some of this, because this is gonna really set it. The Sure Gel Powdered Pectin. This is premium fruit pectin is what it says. I'll hold it up a little bit. Okay. Hold it up a little bit more there so you could see it if you need to take a screenshot or whatever. This is where the canning goods are. Um, that would not be where like gelatins and um, jellies and whatever jellos and all that. <laughs> like that's not where that's sold. That is actually sold where the mason jars are. So you'll pick that up from there. And then uh, you need uh, ground allspice, ground cloves, ground cinnamon. Everybody has water, so I know you've got that, but make sure you've got full water. I see you. You being a silly goose? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're being silly with the canned goods? We're just stirring. We are stirring. I invited you to come canning with me, and this is what it is. It's kind of kind of a process can here. I, I gotta make sure it's nice and hot before I start trying to blend it. Or these cranberries are gonna give my blender a run for their money. Can I, can I, can you wanna stir it? Yes. Okay, just keep stirring. I'm gonna show you what my pot looks like now. We've been chatting for about five minutes. See how much more watery it is. It's starting to really break down that fruit. That sugar's breaking down the fruit. Yeah. It's good guys. Yeah, if you see some strange looking things in there, that's probably the, um, I want to try too, the orange zest. I want to try. Oranges, so that's like a little bit of orange pulp. Orange zest. I want to mix cubes. Okay, mix. That's what we're looking like now. I want to mix. Okay. You're being kind of dangerous. There's not much room on this counter, and she's sitting on it. I'm gonna move you here. Mama, I want to go over here. Are you showing everybody how you have your passy in the middle of the day? <laughs> you don't approve? You gotta set that on my foot, aren't you? Oh, no. Yeah, there's Eliana. Three and a half. I wanna see. It's Can you good. say hi? Hi! <laughs> we went to a cookie decorating party this morning at her preschool, so she's all dressed up still from that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. That was fun? Yeah, that was fun. Hi. They were really good with cooking in the kitchen, so we helped Mommy with everything. Mama, I wanted to. Well, I was just scraping some of the sugar off the sides, that's all. Sugar, this is the process. Is it good? Smells good? Yeah, it smells, smells good. good. Yeah. It's starting to set up a little bit. You can see how it's not as, Mommy, I mean it's too as watery. So Mama, it's like, I mean, I mean it's too water too. We're just stirring and stirring. Stir, I'm going to turn stir. up my heat just a little bit. I do also over here have 
uh, my headspace measurer, also my bubble popper, and my canning tongs. Got to grab those cans with because they're hot. They are hot. I've got all my lids, like my clean. I do, I do wash my lids. They don't have to sit in warm water. Um, I don't know how old the recipes are that you're looking at, but these no longer have to sit in hot water while you wait to get them on because yeah, Ball has perfect. changed them to where they could just that. be warm to make sure. <laughs> They're going on a hot jar, so they don't also have to be hot. For my pressure can goods, sometimes I'll stick them in the hot water just to make sure like they're extra, extra sterilized um, because the pressure can goods have to be really, really, really safe. <laughs> Excuse me, Eliana. Well, you yeah. blessed me. <laughs> I blessed you. Oh, I'm gonna mix two plates. It smells. I don't know, they smell so good. All right, hang on, let me um. I wanna mix. Let me kind of push it along the edge. It flew off. That was in the trash. Mix, mix. It's not even soft yet. Flying runaway cranberry, huh? Was that a runaway cranberry? Yeah. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I also don't want to keep you guys hostage. Let's see how it does with this. I don't want to puree it. I'm not looking to puree it. I'm just looking to kind of chop it. So I'm going to try it, see how it goes. jamming it down. You can see where the stuff's like the pulp is all stuck in the sides. I'm just kind of jamming it down on the on the oranges there. Ew. So those are getting all nice and pureed Ew. into it. I don't want to puree the um, I want to mix the cranberry so that's not what I'm trying to do. Mommy. I'm going to mix it. Nope. <laughs> I wish you guys were here to smell this. It smells amazing. Uh, yeah. that's what Look at that. It's doing exactly what I wanted to do. So how long have I had it on? About 10 minutes. Well, I wouldn't lift that up. You're going to burn your face. You're going to burn your face. You're going to burn your face. That's a lot of steam. Move back. Move back. Uh-uh. Canning is a big deal, young lady. You have to be careful. Curiosity killed the cat, curiosity burned the child. Okay, let's see here. So I'm gonna throw in just a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of butter to cut down on the foaming. So like tiny, tiny, tiny is in like half a teaspoon. Nope, nope, I don't need any more. I don't need any more, we're not. Any dairy does not set up well with canning. Like you can't long-term can anything with dairy. So very, very little butter. Just enough to cut back on the foam. Skim the foam off the top because I don't want foam. Who wants to get a jelly that has foam all over the top, right? You want nice, smooth jam. If you want to turn this into a jelly, you can. All you do is strain it, but you'll get a lot less. So you'll need to like double, triple the recipe if you want to have enough to give people. Now, when it comes to doubling or tripling a recipe, you can't do it like this. You actually have to like get your batch done pull it out because it's the right amount of sugar, right amount of pectin. Don't ask me why, that's just how it works. But um, you actually will have to like make it all again from scratch if you want to double the recipe. You can't throw two bags of cranberries, two bags of strawberries, two oranges, you get the gift. Um, this is nice. 
Let me get my, for $2, this immersion blender wasn't a bad investment. I'm happy with this. All right, now we're getting really hot. So I'm gonna turn it down because I'm not trying to like crazy boil, okay? Not yet. I gotta get the, I gotta get the pectin in first. Well, what do you know? That's a nice handy little device to have in the kitchen. I am in love with this immersion blender. Sweet. Let's get a couple of these last cranberries that escaped notice. I don't want a whole cranberry. I want pieces of cranberry, which is why I'm not like holding it down and going nuts with it over the cranberries. Because I want pieces of cranberry still in there. This is HEM, not a jelly. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, let me take my immersion blender apart. Go dump this part in the sink. Because it has served me well. And let me show you. Let me show you what we've got. All right, look at that. That was with the immersion blender. Isn't it pretty? Look at that. All right, that's exactly what I want. I still want it to have some chunks of stuff in there, but I don't want whole things. Like I don't want a whole strawberry. I don't want a whole cranberry, but I definitely want to see the pieces of it because this is a jam. All right, so now let me add my Sure Gel Pectin. There it is, I'm adding a whole package. All right, this was the whole box. One, one package coming to the box. Keep that in mind as well, you get one package per box. So if you're gonna make double the recipe, you gotta get two boxes. So keep that in mind, gotta have the right amount. Now that that's added, I gotta bring it to a boil and let it boil for a while. If you're using a, a thermometer in here, I do not have one. I just kind of eyeball it and get it boiling. But if you're using a thermometer, you're looking at about 220 degrees in the pot um, for about, about five minutes. You don't need to do it too long. You don't wanna scald your, your jelly jam, whatever you're making. <laughs> if you strain it, it'll be jelly. If you don't strain it, it'll be jam. Uh, now, if you want to make a jelly, you could also use the, like, basically instant jelly stuff. Hang on, I think I've got some back here. Uh, where did I put that? Maybe not. I've got Pomosa's Universal Pectin. Um, I don't have time to look for it. I have, like, a, a liquid jelly. It's like an instant jelly. I forget what it's called. But if you have something that has not set, you can kind of like add that in on the sly. <laughs> and if it hasn't set when it goes in its jars, you can just kind of boop, boop, stir it in. It'll help it set. Um, and it's really good to also get, if your jelly hasn't done what it's supposed to do, get it to set. Just know that if you don't use some kind of pectin, you're probably not going to end up with a jelly. You're probably going to just end up with that. That's not jam, and that's not jelly, that's like some kind of schlock. So, if that's what you like, I mean, if you're just using it as a marinade or to go on top of food or whatever, you could skip the, the pectin. But I'm gonna be giving it out. I want it to set up nice. I want it to kind of look like a cranberry sauce um, in a way. I want it to be nice and solid and hold up. Y'all are doing great. We're at almost 30 minutes in on the video. This is about how long it takes to do canning. So just know that you need to set aside about an, about an hour of your time between setting up, cleaning up, canning, all that. Which isn't really bad, considering you're gonna be making six gifts, um, at least. I've got some little four ounce jars, and I've got some uh, eight ounce jars that I'm going to be putting some in. I'm not sure how many four ounce jars I have left back here, maybe none. I just had, I think it was four. How many do I have in here? Four? Four. I just had four left in the garage for the summertime. I haven't been stocking up because I don't use these in the wintertime very much because I don't do a whole lot of jams and jellies. The four ounces are great because they're great little tiny gifts. They like give somebody a taste of what you've made. They're fun to receive, but they're not quite as overwhelming an amount of stuff. So like if you're making 
well, let's see, for, for me, for instance, I've got um, muscadine jelly that I've got a little four ounce. I'm going to have this Christmas jelly and a little four ounce. I've got blueberry lavender jelly and a four ounce. And so like, it's a kind of a sampler setup. So that's a really cute gift to give is like a sampler setup of your homemade jellies instead of having like the bigger jars. Do I have one over here? No. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Here's my elderberry syrup that I took this morning. So these are kind of overwhelming to get three jellies in and they also take a lot of your time. Half that size, so you get two people to give it to instead of one person to give it to. And they're adorable little samples to give and so they make such cute, I mean, I'm telling you, like stack them, wrap a ribbon around them. I know you can't really see me because of the steam, but they are like super cute to give as gifts. Just FYI. All right, it cut down on the foam a lot to add the butter. Just saying I know you can't see in my pot I wish you could this is kind of like a do it with me tutorial which is why I'm letting it go longer because you should literally be doing this the same amount of time I'm doing it <laughs> you should be standing over your pot the same amount of time I'm standing over my pot so that's why I'm doing it like this is to make sure that you're doing everything the same amount of time that I am Especially if you're a first time canner, you're beginning with this kind of stuff. This will be a really good video for you to start out with because you're literally doing it with me. It's like you're in the kitchen with me and getting to do it. Again, this is a first time for a recipe for this, but I have been making jellies since 2014. So this summer I'll be coming up on my eighth year of it. It's gone pretty well. I did have some meat go bad um, in the pantry. It made our whole house smell like something had died. <laughs> it was awful. Uh, so what happened is I had to go to piano lessons and teach piano for 30 minutes. And I was doing some pressure canning with some ground beef. And I forgot to tell Jason, my husband, not to put the, or to, to go ahead and put the round weight on top of the pressure canner. So I was gone and I realized, oh my goodness, I've never shown him how to put the weight on the pressure canner. So the pressure canner is just at home, like spewing all the water out and he didn't know to put the thing on. So long story short, I got home, put the thing on, then it ran out of water. And so then I had to like pull everything out, put more water in, try again, got really late. None of, the, none of the jars that did it set. And I used the lids from China that like have no markings on top. So you always need to make sure you're using the lids. And they're now available in stores again that have ball written on top because I bought some from Amazon that did not have ball written on top. And they are awful lids. They're not for canning. Even though it says they're for canning, they're not for canning. They don't they don't adhere, they're, they're terrible. So I use them to bake my pies in now because you can't use your ball lids to bake the pies in or it will ruin them. So if you wanna get some like junk lids to just bake pies in, go for it. Um, if you're gonna be doing that regularly. All right, I want you to see what I've got here. I've got a good rolling boil. That's what I wanna see. I wanna see that rolling boil. I want it really hot. It's actually like, you can see where it's kind of popping up along the sides there. It's thickening. See how it's sticking to the spoon better? So we're thickening up. That's what I want to see. You need this. You need this to get nice and thick on my spoon. I don't know why. I just feel like everything cooked with a wooden spoon tastes better than things cooked with a metal spoon. Like I'll stir my sweet tea with a wooden spoon too, because I swanny. I don't know what it is. It just tastes better. <laughs> I don't know why. I, maybe it's just a mental thing. Somebody tell me if you prefer wooden spoons and over metal spoons, or maybe even for plastic spoons. I have a lot of plastic too, um, like the Farberware things. See, that's, now I'm having to actually like tap to get it all off. That's what I wanna see. Very, very pretty. It's setting up nicely. Pectin's getting all stirred in. Isn't that a beautiful looking jam? Like, can you imagine how pretty that is gonna be with a ribbon wrapped around it, when I give it to folks. I mean, it's gonna be really pretty. Yeah. 
you're gonna open it up and there's gonna be like pieces of the orange zest in there, some cranberry, oranges. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I can't wait. I'm definitely gonna be trying it, of course. You've gotta sample your own cooking. You always need to sample your own cooking <laughs> before you hand it out to others. Like, even if it's just like once I'm done getting it spooned out, licking the spoon to taste it, like I always sample my cooking to make sure that it's just right. It's not like, ugh, you know? Sometimes you make things and it's like, ugh, needs a little something, something. All right. Most of the time, a little bit of salt or a little bit of sugar will pretty much fix the ooh thing. Or if you're Southern, you're making a Southern meal, a little butter, butter fixes everything. Okay. That's really, really pretty. I like how it's sticking to the spoon. See, it's still gonna fall off. I mean, if I put, if I got Welch's jelly and sprayed it on here, like it would fall off the spoon if I'm holding the spoon like that. So it's not going to become completely jellyfied while you're cooking it because it's actually, once it cools, then it sets and then it jellyfies and that's when it gets like that nice gelatin kind of, and you can wiggle it. <laughs> It goes. So, all right. I believe this is looking good. It's been rolling for about five minutes. Videoing this is actually good because I'm able to see like my time on how long I've been videoing and you guys have been sticking with me now for 36 minutes. So, wow, good job. Um, now, this is just me um, for scooping out my stuff and putting it in the jars. I like to use a measuring cup because it just like gets a good scoop and I don't waste a bunch of time like I do with a spoon. This is going to take me forever to spoon jelly out. I don't have forever. I don't have time. I'm making a batch of elderberry syrup today too. Mama ain't got time for this, okay? So I'm going to grab my jar with my jar tongs. I'm going to set it right here. I'm going to use my little thing here let's see this is a third cup and this will be a half cup so let's see how it does I need to leave a fourth inch head space so I'm going to put a little bit in to my hot jar make sure your jars are hot or they're gonna crack okay now let me measure that this is the important part is when you're getting these measurements right okay so I'm just gonna set this down right now. Okay. I'm gonna move this around so you can see. I'm sorry for all the movement of the phone. So I've got my jar here and I've got my headspace measure. One fourth is the bottom. I'm gonna stick that in there. I'm not quite there, believe it or not. If you could see that, I'm not quite there. So I'm just gonna add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more to hit that one fourth space. So I'm just gonna add like a little bit of my spoon there because that ought to do it. Measure that. Oh, a little bit more. A little tiny bit more. This is important. Headspace measuring is important because that's how much air is going to be left inside your jar to create botulism. So you always follow the headspace. Now, meat requires like an inch headspace. Um, that's perfect right there because you don't want it basically like exploding in the pressure canner while it's, while it's cooking. Where's my vinegar? So meat needs like a ton of head space with one inch. Most of your jellies and jams and stuff are gonna require like between half an inch to a fourth inch head space and your recipe will tell you what that head space is. If it doesn't tell you head space, don't follow the recipe because it's probably just a like homemaker person who was like, hey, I'm just gonna try making this and ooh, it tastes really good and then they'll not know what headspace is or anything like that. And so you can know that if you're canning it, it may not be exactly safe for preservation, which would not be good, would it? We wanna have it safe for preservation. Most of these things that are water bath canned for like 10 minutes or so, they're only good for a year to 18 months. So fingertip tight. You're not over tightening. If you over tighten, you can actually cause the lids to crack during their bath. So just fingertip tight, not going crazy on it. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and spoon out some more. Oh yeah, hello. Hello, nice. Okay, it's already forming like a nice film across the top, which means that my my jelly's already starting to set a little bit. I've turned the heat off, which is why it's gonna go ahead and start setting a little bit. All right, let's see if that I got that right with one fourth headspace. I might actually have to take a little out maybe. Nope, it's exact. Woo. Okay. A fourth inch is almost all the way up to the top. You never fill these things all the way up to the top. Otherwise, you're going to end up with an explosion while it's canning because it's got to have some room to release the oxygen. I know none of you guys want anything to explode all over your kitchen, especially if it's red. What a mess and sugary. Fingertip tight. Ooh, that's a hot jar though. Okay, that's good. I want it to be hot. Get my, get my jar grabbers. I don't know if these have a fancy name. These have a fancy name. Y'all tell me if these have a fancy name. I just call them jar grabbers. Ooh, and the jar flip. I'm gonna need to add a little bit more water to my canner, I believe. No, it's still at the top. It's been rolling for a while to heat these jars and get hot, so I've lost some of my water with that. All right. Oh, they're so cute. I hate I only have four. I should have bought a case today. I did see a case and then I thought, no, I'll just get the, the eight ounce jars. I don't really know what possessed. Oh yeah, yeah, now I do. Okay, I, I'm making um, elderberry syrup. Elderberry syrup does better than the eight ounce. And I was like, I don't wanna get a bunch of four ounce jars. And then I'm gonna have them sitting around until like next year. And I've already started my mason jar. Ah, it's hot. I already started my mason jar storage, but it's kind of a pain to find places to stash them for a year if you're like stacking up the mason jars. Every time I go to the store, I try and buy, if I see them, quart sized jars, pint sized jars, half pint sized jars, like whatever, because you can't find them in the summertime. If you're planning on canning this summer and you're planning on canning like jams and jellies and stuff, get, get your, it's four ounce and it's eight ounce. Those are your sizes that you're mostly going to use for jellies and and jams and butters and that kind of stuff. Cause I did blueberry jelly um, last year, but I noticed that I have like a ton of the, the blueberry, like I guess hulls. Well, I don't know. I don't really know what you call them. Blueberry skins. Like it was all fine. It was nice and pureed and everything, but it was too thick for the, for the, uh, the jelly. So I just made blueberry butter out of it and didn't throw it away. I'm not throwing away all my hard work. I went out and sweated for hours to pick those things. And I'm not just gonna go toss them. That'll make me cry. <laughs> I hate picking things in the summertime, but that's when everything's at peak, so there it is. And you're like drenched in sweat, picking gallons and gallons and gallons of berries. And the last thing you want is to have to throw any of that away. I think this year I'm gonna try doing like blueberry juice or something with my, with my excess and see how that turns out. Maybe try something different. Do like I taught you to do with the apple leftovers and just boil them and see if I could boil them with some water in there and like make a homemade blueberry juice. Ooh, that's hot. And that. Don't touch any of this with your bare hands. You will get burned. Always have your jar on. Canning is an art. But you also have to be smart with your art. Okay, so I've run out of my little four ounces. So I'm gonna start with my eight ounces, which means I'm gonna be going down on my on my goods here pretty quickly. This recipe is supposed to make six of these eight ounce jars, and I made four of the little ones, so I guess I could expect about four more. It looks like I should have a lot more left than that, but I guess these ladies who make it said it's about six. Six with a little leftover, so I guess the little leftover will go into our belly. I'll just put it in the like little Tupperware container for the fridge. <laughs> I have steak I'm making for dinner tonight. No, it wouldn't be very good on that. But oh, but I did get some pork on clearance from um, Harris Teeter today. They had their their manager markdown. I always decide what I'm going to cook based on that. <laughs> if I haven't pre-decided, 
So I got some like skirt steak that was $5 off and then I got some pork and then I got some chicken tenders. So I guess that's the next few days for meals. Now I just kind of took my, took my vinegar and went boop on my, on my top here. It's just a little bit damp and I'm just wiping my rims down to get all the jelly that may have sloshed up on it, which I have some that may have sloshed up on the rim um, or anything else. I'm just sanitizing the rims before I add the lid. Just like that, a little bit of that. Oh, from my headspace measure. Yeah. Okay, I'll put that on, get my ring. I don't bother washing the rings. They never touch the food. You take them off for storage. Um, if I were you though, I would put the rings on if you're gifting this stuff, just because it looks prettier <laughs> with the rings on. Um, I've been gifted mason jars before with the rings off. I don't know, they just don't look as pretty. Appearance-wise, if you're giving it as a gift, it would just look better with the, with the, what you call it, ribbon, twine, string, whatever you use. It would look better with the twine and the lids, the rings on the lids. I mean, it's just prettier. It looks more complete that way. That's the word I'm thinking of. It looks incomplete when you receive something that doesn't have the ring. Okay. I'm going to pull out this one because I don't think I'm going to need it. I've got a pretty good amount of little, little gifts in here, guys. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm waiting for cranberries to go on clearance because you can bet your bottom I'm going to be going and finding them and rounding them up so I can make some more stuff like cranberry sauce, maybe some cran apple jam, some more of this Christmas jam. Yeah, you can bet your bottom I'm going to be going around in that stuff up if I find it on clearance. Ooh, yeah. can I try some and it will be going on clearance can because nobody buys cranberries after Christmas jam? except us canners, right? Can I try some of the Christmas jam? Can you try a little licky of the Christmas jam? Yeah. Our spoon should be um, pulled off by now. You know it smells good if the baby's asking to lick. All right, I'm about at the bottom of my pot. I'm a baby. Okay, you're my baby. You're not a real baby. You're not a real baby, but you're my baby. Doesn't that count for anything? I'm not a baby. I'm not Link. I'm mommy's baby. I'm not Link, mama. Yeah, you're a little baby. My baby. Oh, that's Judah's game. Zelda. He's, he plays his link. Okay. No. I, no. What? I call me Rylan. Rylan? Rylan is that to I didn't you. call you anything. You need to get down. I gotta get away. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Oh, How are the ring in there? Where'd my rings go? are new, but I have rings that are kind of sitting there. Why is it a baby? Okay, here we go. When is a baby and I'm not a baby anymore. So I've got... Can I check them as... Let me check my... Christmas. They weren't kidding. I think I could get another four ouncer out of this. So I think total I could actually get... Hang on, let me see. I could actually get five four ounce jars and four eight ounce jars. But I do not have any more four ounce, so I'm just going to take whatever is left after measuring this headspace and put it in a little container and we will eat off of it. Because Eliana is like biting at the bullet to, to try it. It does smell, it smells, mm, it smells amazing. Good night. I kind of want to just leave my house for five minutes, you know, like and breathe the fresh air and then come back in and smell and just see what it smells like. Somebody buy hamburger, please come. Okay, perfect. You can see the, the jelly's almost completely up to the rim. It's, oh, it's hot. Hard for me to lift. Let me go ahead and put my, my lid on. So what time are we at? Oh, somebody's calling. That would be my husband. You can wait, I'm almost done. Okay, let me wheel this around here. So this is about how much I have left, and I'm gonna put that in a little Tupperware container in the fridge. It'll last about two weeks, and this is how much is going in my canner. Woohoo! So 
So my steam canner. Okay, so I'm not gonna count, start the countdown until this arrow gets into the green zone, the middle one. And then I'll start my 10 minute counter. So you don't start, let me pick up this towel. You don't start counting on your canner until you've got a good rolling boil. So if you're uh, water bath canning it and you've got them, you have to have the lids totally submerged. Water's gotta be on top of the lids. It's gotta stay on top of the lids for a full 10 minutes. So you're gonna let that go in a rolling boil for a full 10 minutes and then you are done. You're gonna pull them out, you're gonna set them. I'm gonna be setting them on my towel here. This is where I have my lids, I have my immersion. Immersion blender top still sitting there. So I'm gonna pull them out, set them on here, let them rest for 24 hours. And then tomorrow I'm going to pull off the rings, check the seals, and then I'll have my jars and then I'll label them and they'll be ready to go out as little presents. They'll fly away to all the households. So I hope you guys stuck with me. I know 50 minutes is a long video. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for canning with me. I hope you had a great time and that you feel like you are ready to do some water bath canning and try something new. Try it. It's probably delicious. I'm going to actually like lick the spoon. Oh, wow. Uh, that's better than I thought. That, um, my taste buds are going, oh. hang on, I'm drooling. That is like a barrage of amazing flavors all at once. I can actually taste the, the spices in it. Good. Mm. Mm -hmm. I can eat that right out of the can. <laughs> that is good. Uh, Y'all need to try it. Y'all need to try it. It's, it's, mm. that's really good. Uh, Eliana's going to love that. Eliana, you want to try some? Laura, a little spoon. Her little mini spoon I used to measure her spices. Anyway, I don't think this is going in the fridge. <laughs> Just gonna stand here and eat it. Y'all have a great day. Enjoy your canning. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. If you like this type of video, I know it's long, but if you like actually getting like a canning with me kind of video where we can together at the same time and you learn how to do it literally step by step and watch as I'm doing it, then please let me know. Um, I'd be happy to do more of these, especially leading into the summer when we're getting into all of those wonderful veggies and everything. Um, strawberry season is first, it's coming next, but I could also do it with things, I mean, I can all winter. I do meats, I do lots of stuff. So um, I will see you guys in the next video, maybe. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs>